welcome to Max TV. My name is Max. I'll be your host. Today our guests are Matthew Marshall, a director I've had the pleasure of working with, an actor named Judy Carmet, who I've also had the pleasure of working with, and a special performance from Chris Campbell, also known as Phoenix Fire. You won't want to miss it, and we'll be right back after this. Attack, fight close up, scene one, take one. Welcome back to Max TV. Today I'm here with director Matthew Marshall. And I've had the pleasure of working with him for many productions, and I'm glad he could come here today. It's a pleasure to be part of the show. No problem. Um, now, you've done a lot of movies. Which ones are your favorite to work with? Um, it's hard to pick a favorite. Each one's kind of been different. The, the last few, uh, we've had uh, addictions, which dealt with various addictions. Uh, not only drug addictions, but also addictions like food addictions, video games, cell phones, that kind of thing. So it, it mm -hmm. caused a, covered a wide spread. Yeah, to kind of say there's more than just drugs and Correct. other stuff. There's a and lot then, of And then, I mean, the next one I did was actually Daughter of the King, which was a feature length that dealt okay. with human trafficking. Okay. So that kind of opened my mind to, to some stuff that even goes on in London, Ontario and surrounding okay. area. And then, uh, then we got into Struggles Within, which was actually told through, through dance and dealt with depression. Okay. Uh, the most recent one um, being Malicious Attack, and it dealt with bullying. So, I mean, lots of teens that I worked with. So, I mean, there's a whole variety of different issues we've got into, and, and that's, each one's been fun. So it's hard to pick one that I like the most or that's yeah. my favorite. Awesome. Um, how many awards have your films won? I've really been in many festivals, yeah. and I heard they were very successful. So overall, the, my filmmaking has won 65 plus awards. Wow. And still growing. Uh, some of the early ones won one or two. Uh, there was one that won four. Uh, some of them, the one production, Addictions, won one for my leading actress, and that was the only award we won for that film. Uh, more recently, um, Daughter of the King did very well. It had 32 awards, 16 official showings, uh, three nominations, and one finalist. Wow, for one film. For one film. Uh, so it was very successful around the world. And then uh, Tuned In has as the, it's, it's coming close to, uh, okay. to Daughter of the King. Not quite yet, but it's drawing close. And I feel by the time we're done festivals that probably it will exceed in awards and official showings. People are becoming less and less connected to family and other personal relationships. You're grounded. Grounded indefinitely to my room from all electronic devices, which means no phone. Look who's talking. Poor baby can't live without her phone. Do you know why you got grounded? Because I was disrespectful and I broke a house rule. Perhaps it might help you to tune into the basics and what's important in life. I care about you more than you care about me. No one sees this from my point of view, not even you. You're always focused on your phone. At least I pay attention and listen to you and you have a problem. That's more than I can say for you. You need to make sure that built-in radio inside you is tuned in the right channel. Cell phone. We feel rewarded with every post, text, and new tweet. It's like a drug, and as with any drug over time. Okay, wow, that's amazing. Um, what are these trophies you have here? I've been so, looking at them for a while. So these two are from Daughter of the King. Mm -hmm. One is the Indie Fest, and, uh, and that's this one over here. Wow. And then we actually have the Accolade, which has the stars. <laughs> the cool thing about these particular trophies, they were two of the 32 that we won. Uh, they were actually made by the same company that makes the Oscars and the wow. Emmys. So they're very heavy and uh, a nice uh, oak piano base and then the 24 karat gold. So they're a pair of the, the gems. I love all the awards I've won, but they are a couple they're of showcases. Some of the special ones, yeah. They're showcases that um, sit on the mantel. So, uh, would you mind if I held one? Sure, go ahead. Oh, you're right. Wow, that is heavy. Yes, I, I now understand why they created murder mysteries that they use the, the trophy as, as a weapon. Um, mm -hmm. it's, uh, the weight of them is, is very yeah. heavy. <laughs> yeah. yeah. More of Max TV. We'll be back after this case. I just want to get this over with and plead out. 
Miss Miller, I think you need not say anything more and speak to a lawyer. I just want to get this over with and move on. The deal you had before is not on the table anymore. From a prosecutor to a high school principal to the mother of the legendary Donnelly clan, please welcome Judy Cormier. Hi, Max. Hi. Now, Judy, acting on stage and screen, why do you think, why do you like the best and why? Well, I like them both. I think mm -hmm. maybe the one that I might like the best is uh, stage acting. Okay. I like that because you have instant feedback from your audience. Yeah. Um, it's great when you're all done uh, a show for the evening and the audience hopefully enjoys it enough <laughs> yeah. that they clap wildly and stand and uh, cheer for you. It's a great feeling. So, hmm. yeah. Okay. Um, how do you prepare for um, stage acting? How do I prepare? Yeah. Uh, for stage acting, well, I do a lot of research in the characters. Uh, certainly, mm -hmm. if there's any historical references, any words that I don't understand, any words that I'm not sure of, I look up everything that I, I don't know. Um, I research the characters, the history, the timelines. Um, hmm. I get a sense of the costumes for that era. Then I take a look at the second, the, the secondary, I shouldn't say that, the other characters of the show. Um, mm -hmm. I do the same thing for film as well. So the pre preparations is a lot of research, a lot of uh, looking into history, if it's a historical play or a film. Okay. And um, also taking a look at my own character um, and their relationships with the other characters. Mm. Um, getting a sense of how my relationships would be with each of the, with each of the characters, which mm -hmm. each of the other people in how, how much they relate to each other and yep. stuff. Exactly. Cool. Interesting. Um, how long have you been doing acting for? Uh, I've been stage acting for about 17 years. Cool. I've only been film acting for about three. Okay. Um, so stage acting for 17, and I've performed um, all over southwestern Ontario, wow. uh, London, Elmer. St. Thomas, Tilsonburg, St. Mary's. Awesome. Um, yeah. And how did you get started? What made you want to do it? Well, I um, stayed at home with my children when they were mm -hmm. really little, and I wanted to get out and be with some adults, and I've always loved theater. So I thought, why not join a, a, a theater group? So I went to the Palace Theater in London, and they were having uh, scene studies and character studies and monologue studies. So I started with that. And uh, that's just fostered more of a love in theater and acting and that sort of thing. I also love um, the relationships of people. I love learning, and okay. I learn something with every single show that I'm a part of, whether it's a historical thing that I've learned or uh, relationships uh, between people, some psychology in there too. There's a lot to learn, so I learn something hmm. every single time I do any wow. any show. <laughs> wow, that's awesome. Hello, Miss Miller. I'm the prosecutor of your case. I just want to get this over with and plead out. Miss Miller, I think you need not say anything more and speak to a lawyer. Just want to get this over with and move on. The deal you had before is not on the table anymore. Well, um, thanks for coming on the show, and I hope I see you on set soon. Excellent. Thanks, Max. We'll be right back after this. Isn't it, Max? Yeah, I didn't feel it from here.
get your freedom when you die. Yeah, 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 yeah. You'll get your freedom when you die. Welcome back to Max TV, and today my next guest has been wowing audiences with performances that have to be seen to be believed. Please welcome Phoenix Fire. Thanks for having me on the show, Max. No problem. Thanks for coming. Now tell me, how did you get started being a sideshow performer? Um, well, it's been going on for a long time. Uh, I started performing, well, learning to perform and perform uh, about 14 years ago. Before that, I uh, grew up a uh, very religious life and also was a professional athlete for a while. Realized I had a high tolerance for pain. Um, from there, uh, started learning fire first. Um, mm -hmm. Funny story or interesting story was uh, learned originally from a gentleman who uh, had no family. Uh, he had cancer, um, no place to live, oh. so he stayed at my house and taught me everything he knew until he passed. Um, and then from there, I uh, learned from a fire breather called Seamus. Um, he taught me the art of fire breathing to more of an extent that I had learned. Um, at that point, I had mm. learned uh, basics of fire and doing stunt work and full body lights. Um, and then um, from there, kind of dabbled around with the fire. Um, actually got attacked uh, in my hometown where I live uh, and uh, almost killed. Um, and from there, uh, actually uh, um, had a huge agoraphobia, didn't want to leave my house um, wow. after uh, you know, uh, that accident. Um, performing is actually what uh, actually saved me from that. Um, started to, uh, you know, that need to get out, and it was a way to push myself. So learned a few acts, um, got out performing, and then from there uh, um, had the opportunity to uh, go do a TV show in California, and uh, went and did that. Um, and then from there started, uh, kind of opened up a lot of doors and. Hmm. Um, met a lot of people and from there uh, built the show called the Stranger Danger Thrill Show which was what I have now. Nice, that's very interesting. Um, now what other stuff do you do besides fire? Um, do a bit of everything. So in the Stranger Danger Thrill Show basically it's what it sounds. It's either strange or dangerous. Um, I have a great team. Um, I have my assistant uh, Stacy who uh, is a big part of the show. Um, she uh, learns a lot from me, and I also she's also has a creative mind as well, so it allows me to uh, have a really fun show. But it's basically everything: it's variety, um, comedy, um, but things like you know stunts, like uh, things in the sideshow world, like blockhead, so sticking stuff into my head, um, things like that, um, uh, staples. It yeah. could be anything. So anything that uh, you know you may not realize that you can do to yourself. Um, I make it possible. Wow. Do you have anything today that you could? Yeah, I think later on that we're going to do some uh, fire. Um, we're going to do a little fire performance. Now, have you ever been severely injured doing any of yours? Uh, yes, I've had, while doing, uh, I've had lots of injuries in my life. That's how I figured out I had a high tolerance to pain. But uh, in doing what I do, yes, I've had three major accidents. Um, wow. One was, uh, many people don't realize this, but bounce sheets. Um, on your clothing. Oh, um, what, sorry? Bounce sheets, so you know, that dryer sheets. Oh. So it actually is, uh, it decreases the flame retardants in fabrics, um, puts that powder onto your clothing. And uh, unknowingly, I had a shirt in a show that uh, had that on it, and it ignited during a show. Um, fortunately, uh, lots of training practice. Um, I was able to keep it under control, pulled the shirt over my head, put it out, continued with the show, um, cleaned up, got paid, went home and actually had a shower. That's how my body didn't really realize that it was in much uh, danger. Shock? Yeah, it was in shock. Um, hmm. Then I went to the hospital. When I went to the hospital, they actually said, you know, there's rooms like that uh, for people that have been burned as bad as you have. So I had basically second and third degree burns from my stomach up into my face and my arm was the worst. Oh. So Yeah, I can see that one right there. Yeah. So hmm. um, unfortunately, it got infected and it went necrotic. So they actually, at some one point, we were deciding whether we we're going to keep my arm or not. So that was a pretty interesting moment of my life. So not something you expect to get faced with, but in sideshow wow. any, and performing, anything can happen. But 
fortunately I learned from it and also it gives me the opportunity to uh, teach other performers around the world. I kind of am um, an advocate for the, the dryer sheet thing, um, but it's, uh, you know, it's, uh, people don't realize that it, it can, those things can happen and mm -hmm. it happens so quickly. But staying safe, you know, it's, yeah. there's protocols around safety that we have to keep in mind while we're doing these things. and. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, I can't pull off these stunts without the team I have, you know, without my assistant, you know, Stacy, uh, the team that I have, uh, you know, um, you know, having my back and watching things that I may not notice as well. So yeah. it's all a combination of things and uh, making sure that, uh, you know, things go safe. So pretty much at the end of the day, it's just safety with teamwork? Yeah, safety with teamwork. Now, saying that things can happen unexpected, uh, I actually had a shark hook that went through my wrist. Um, mm -hmm. Uh, logistics are uh, weight distribution, a chain broke, and a shark hook went through this side, and you can see where it's come out oh, there. Oh, wow. Um, so that's a real scar there. That's yeah. a real scar, yeah. Four <laughs> hours of surgery. Um, very lucky. Uh, I took it out of the show because you only get, uh, you don't get that lucky twice. So, um, yeah. But yeah, so accidents do happen, but it's, you know, it is part of the game. It's Stranger Danger Thrill Show, so these things are going to happen. Um, whether you plan for them or not, but it's what happen when they happen. It's what you do to make sure that both the audience is safe um, and to stay calm because nobody really wants to see somebody running around panicked. Um, yes. Because then they panic and it starts a whole, you know. Yeah, it starts a whole chain yeah. reaction. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I I know you have a lot of world records, but ex do you know how exactly how many you have for today? Um, I actually don't know exactly how many I have. It's over 20, under 30. Um, so, and we are we have a couple wow. that are in transition right now, um, that are being approved. So, but uh, mm -hmm. my goal was uh, actually going back to that accident that we you know when I was attacked downtown um, mm -hmm. last year. I set a goal to do 12 world records, so a world record every month. So fortunately, I surpassed that. Um, it was a kind of a mental. Um, challenge for me to keep me focused and you know to uh, you know um, keep me motivated and challenge myself. I do these world records. Everybody asks me, you know, why I do them. For me, it's a challenge to keep myself, uh, you know, creative and also you know that ability to uh, um, keep pushing forward and and really driving myself. So, where can people um, see your performances? Um, so people can see me. I don't uh, do as much traveling as I used to. Um, I've actually got a very big fan base in Canada and Ontario. So I do a lot of traveling here um, in uh, southwestern Ontario, Ontario. Um, so you can, you know, uh, see uh, updates on my uh, Facebook page. So F E N Y X F Y R E, and also uh, my Instagram is where I do most of my posting. So the Phoenix Fire. Of, uh, you know we've got some really fun projects that are coming up so we're going to be doing a little more traveling right now uh, um, my uh, knife thrower and my uh, assistant Miss Anatomy Stacy and myself we're actually in a comic book that's being made uh, up right now by um, a, a, another performer who's called Mar Omega um, so we're looking forward to that so once that comes out there's going to be a really big push on uh, traveling and, and doing lots of performing so Pretty interesting project we've got going on. Yeah, so you're just trying to get like as many projects done as you po as you can. Yeah, I do a lot of uh, a lot of uh, video work now. I find that uh, that you know that's the best way to get your yeah. yourself out there. So um, like YouTube and stuff. Uh, YouTube, yeah, we have uh, the Sin Labs YouTube, and then also I also post stuff. So, um, but uh, there'll be a, a lot of projects coming up that you'll be able to see me. So I'll keep you posted. We'll see Phoenix Fire's fire performance right after this.
So that's what we call fire eating, and uh, this is what we call fleshing. So Max, check this out. Whoa. Pretty cool, eh? Yeah. So that's the smaller things. There's lots of different types of fire that we can do. But uh, everybody always wants to see the fire breathing. So you want to see some of that, Max? Yeah. All right. Sure. Thanks so much for watching The Max Show, and thank you, Phoenix Fire, for your amazing performance. Thank you very much for having me. We'll see you next time. <laughs>